Hello and welcome to another exclusive interview right here on Honey Present. I am so excited about this one. Today I'm interviewing someone who I've been chasing for a while. I've even chased him around in Miami. It is none other than Army James himself, the man behind some of the world's most amazing tattoos. Hello. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Very well, very well. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, we've got so much to talk about, so let's start from the very beginning. How did Army James get involved in tattoos? <clears throat> well, I started um, about 22 years ago doing my first tattoo, and then um, at the time I was in the service, I really couldn't uh, pursue a full career of tattooing. So about 20 years ago, I finally got out and uh, got my big break a few months after I got out of the service. I, um, I got lucky and uh, landed an apprenticeship, and um, it all started from there. And you said you did your first tattoo. Was that on yourself or someone else? No, I actually did the first tattoo on myself, and um, I was just uh, I was getting tattooed, and um, my tattoo artist walked out, got a break, break took too long, so I just grabbed the machine and started tattooing myself. And from that point on, I knew I was like, this is what I'm going to do for the rest of my life. And so um, it was just kind of like, uh, you know, the first glimpse of something that I knew was going to change my life and something that I knew was going to stick with me forever and uh, I just needed to get through, uh, you know, the service and approach it. And out of curiosity, what was that first tattoo? It was a dragon on my leg that I got and um, it was fairly easy. It's not a very painful spot so it's uh, the front of your thighs usually don't hurt that bad so you know, I kind of picked it up and I was able to concentrate and do it. And when he walked in, he looked at the tattoo and he was like, what are you doing? He started screaming. And then he was like, that's pretty, that's pretty yeah. good. That's actually not bad. It's like, you want to finish it? And I go, yeah. He goes, well, it's your leg. And so uh, I finished the tattoo. And um, I literally wished that I didn't have to finish the service at that point. I just wanted to, oh. you know, just fold it up and start a new career. So it took a couple more years to get back into it. But well done to you, you've obviously stuck by it and now you've got London, you've got Miami, you've got New York, you've just opened your London store which happened just a couple of days ago, the launch party. Yep. What's, um, how many tattoos would you say you've done in your whole career approximately, but everyone and yourself, paid or not paid, how many would you say? Thousands, I couldn't even tell you, but it's in the thousands and it's hard to count after, after you've done a thousand tattoos, I don't know. I've been know. tattooing for 20 years and there's times that I did, you know, 8 to 15 tattoos a day, whether they were small oh. ones. So, I mean, you multiply that through all those years and, um, and you know, there was definitely years where I just worked and slaved myself away, you know, and I couldn't even tell you. Well, I was in LA and I was getting my one of my tattoos in LA and when I was there, the tattoo artist there was telling me stories about what he's experienced as a tattoo artist. And I want to ask you, of all these tattoos that you've done, what's been your most memorable for the good reasons and what's been your most memorable for bad reasons? Whether it's a funny reason, a stupid reason, good and bad, what's been your most memorable? You know, it's tough to say because after you've done a number of tattoos like that, uh, it's hard to remember the best ones that you've done. I think the the ones that you're most proud of will definitely keep you the happiest. And so, you know, after doing a few thousand tattoos, I think any tattoo artist kind of has a hard time remembering everything he's done. So sometimes um, you actually get to see things you've done 12 years ago and they really look good and sometimes uh, they don't. So um, Have you ever edited one that you've done yourself? Oh yeah. I think, um, you know, we all start tattooing family members and friends, you know, and uh, because they're the only ones that let you practice. So I think the funniest <laughs> things that happen is, is my brother, I tattooed him a long time ago. And then, you know, I felt so bad for him a year later that I had to fix it. And then I try to fix it again. And I think he's been through like uh, six construction jobs already on wow. him. And you know what? It still doesn't look that good, <laughs> but <laughs> it is what it is, you know. Obviously, Miami Inc. is very, very popular here in the UK. Um, I was one, I was a massive fan. What's your attitude towards people who think that tattoos are only for people who A, just come out of prison, B, are in the army, C, are just street walkers? I, I don't have that attitude. I think if it's your skin and you have something you want to get on yourself, you know, each their own. So what do you say to people who actually have a negative attitude towards tattoos? 
I think it's ignorance. It, it, yeah. You know, I think basically people that, that look at people that have tattoos, it's below them. It's kind of the same thing as, you know, that happened racially with black people, you know, and at one point, you know, black people had to sit in the back of the bus, and at one point, you know, black people weren't allowed to go and wash their hands in the same sink, and, and what is that if not ignorance, yeah. and so... Um, I look at it the same way, you know, how do you judge somebody by, by the choices he's made and what he wanted to put on his body and, you know, at the end of the day, it should make a difference, you know, as long as you professionally do your job in the right place, you should be able to be an attorney with your tattoos on your neck. Yeah. Why is it un issue, unprofessional, it? you know, yeah. is, it, is it unprofessional because you just yeah. don't, you know, you don't get it? It's just ignorance. You know, it's a, it's funny because a friend of mine is a teacher, and then um, in school they were telling him that they don't want his tattoos visible. He's one of the greatest teachers. All yeah. his kids love him. All his students love him to death. You know, he's probably one of the favorite student. I mean, teachers in school. But it's really funny because they're like, well, we don't want to. You know, we don't want to kind of put an image out there that we support kids getting. I'm like, a kid shouldn't be getting tattooed anyway. But what is the difference? As long as he's teaching them what you need, be, you know, what needed to be taught to these kids, and he's professional about it, That's what it. more do you want? And he cares for the kids, so it's uh, unfortunately it's still there. But you know, we're we're kind of kicking the taboo out, and hopefully one day, you know, you're going to be able to do yeah, whatever cool, you want. Terrible. Yeah, of course. Have you ever found one of these? I mean, and you probably can't remember, like like you said. But have you ever had a story that really touched you when they came in and they said, "Okay, Army, this is my story. This is my idea. This is my tattoo." And then that it really touched you in the bottom of your heart. To think yeah, about. I had I had one client, and um, I tattooed him. I think in season two or something like that. He was a guy that had an accident yeah. on a snowmob snowmobile. And um, he became uh, paraplegic, you know, and it was uh, it was really, really, really sad because I did a koi fish on him that turned into a dragon, which was supposed to, you know, represent something that you go through and that you've managed to, you know, win the battle. And only with him, he passed away the next season. So, you know, sitting there for that long, I was tattooing him for, you know, a good 15 hours I think through the whole thing at one point they brought him from the hospital and in the stretcher and he got tattooed on on the bed on the hospital bed in my shop and it was really sad because sometimes you you really connect with your uh, clients and then um, yeah, he died like literally eight, eight months later yeah so we I really liked him he was one of those guys that I could have been friends with forever you know and uh, it's just sad but, yeah. and um Miami Inc, New York, London now. What's your plans next? Where are you gonna take, you know, your dream, your your talent? Where is it going next? Do you have any plans? You know, um, I just opened a shop in yeah. London, so I think I'm gonna concentrate on on getting the shop really moving smoothly, and 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 hopefully uh, we can achieve that pretty quick. Um, it's, my, it was my first time in there, and it's brilliant. It, it's buzzing. The energy in there is brilliant. Yeah, it's um, it's gonna take some time to, yeah. to knock out the kinks, but all in all, I was really, really enthusiastic about opening sh a shop in Europe and um, and being London, being the headquarters of it for for so many reasons. You know, London's got a great, great cultural background and just um, you know, it's just got so much to offer. It's got style, it's got great clientele, it's got everything. You know, and it's uh, it reminds me very much of New York City. So. Um, to me, um, it, it was definitely one of the biggest moves I've made in my career is to come to London. And even though it's not a humongous shop like the one in Miami or the one, or definitely not the one close to being the size of New York, I wanted something really homey and really yeah. fun to do yeah, something yeah, yeah. completely different than the shops in the States. So, it um, works. Yeah, and all we needed was, uh, you know, three or four chairs to be able to bring tattoo artists from all over the world to tattoo here and be able to offer clientele something different. And so uh, this whole shop is built on the idea that we're going to bring in artists that don't live here and yeah. are not locals and are yeah. not native to, to, you know, Europe and basically be able to bring a different form of art, different styles and and really cater to fans that can't make it across because they can't afford taking a you know five day vacation, get tattooed in New York or in Miami, and yeah. so we said, you know what, let's go to them. So 
I've got another question about tattoos is, and I really want you to tell the truth about this. Have you ever turned down a tattoo? Oh yeah, I turn down tattoos all the time. Tattoos that I don't feel like I can pull it off. Um, you know, in what we, way though? In terms of, I can't. In terms of artistically, in terms of the idea, and the, in terms of everything aesthetically, it might not be a good tattoo. So, in terms of people wanting negative tattoos, so, yeah. I mean, it happens all the time. At the end of the day, we try to do the best that we can, and if it's something that we don't feel like we can do the best we can, it's better to pass it to somebody that could do it better. So, it's no shame in the game. You know, um, we're good at what we're good, good and uh, we're not. Well, we're not. We try to better, but sometimes you got to pass what you got to pass. Let's talk about the reality show a little bit more because I heard that you didn't like the way it was being portrayed at first. It was too much editing going on. Your staff weren't being portrayed the way you wanted it to be. How did you make that transition to look? I want to do it my way now. I want this to be my. It's my ink. It's my shop. My way. You know, at the end of the day, um, you know, when I started doing TV, I was fresh to it, just yeah. like anybody else yeah. that ends up on TV. I was approached to do a show about my shop and what I do for a living so I think um, the shock of uh, the editing world kind of uh, didn't really uh, do justice for me but in so many ways it's TV world and eventually you just learn to live with it it's kind of like you know you, 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 you're in a country and you, you have enemies for so long and eventually you just learn how to live with it and learn how to get you know get along and, and know that nothing ends up the way you want it you just make the best of it and i think i came to uh to a conclusion that that's the way it is and that's what you got to do and then you look at the bright side of what what it has to offer and you look at the negative and hopefully there's more of a positive than a negative and then you make that choice so when i did new york inc i definitely had a lot more control of what i wanted to do and what i didn't want to do and um and you know i became a producer on it so i was definitely something but the network still tells you what they need from you and yeah. what they want you yeah. to deliver and and you try to do your best to uh to do it in a way where you're comfortable are you doing it in london you know i've been asked if i'm doing anything in london when it comes to tv i could say right now that it's a little early to think about it i would definitely entertain the idea I but should. um i think right now i'm i'm, I'm spread pretty so thinly yeah, at this yeah, point yeah, yeah. Now let's talk about that. You've got a massive fan base. You've got fan bases from both tattoo lovers and, of course, the women. Because women <laughs> love Army James. Yeah. How do you handle with the fame side of things whilst trying to run a business at the end of the day? I was lucky to get into the TV game late in my life. Okay. You know, I wasn't a, I wasn't a 21 year old kid that all of a sudden got famous. Yeah. So the fame came at a good age. Yeah. I was already 33 when I started doing TV. Okay. So by the time I I started feeling the 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 you know the fame of it, I think I was already 34. I wasn't a kid, you know. So it didn't get to my head. I just kind of stayed the same. I just noticed how things change around you and um kind of pushed me to be a hermit more than anything. I just kind of stopped going out so much yeah. and stopped, you know, um putting myself out there as much and you know, you miss your privacy. So more than anything, um Stayed humble, just kept on doing what I'm doing, concentrated on uh, the benefits of, of uh, you know, becoming a little famous and um, and open businesses and took all my friends with me, like uh, oh, wow. some people that do, you know, when they get, you know, success that comes with what we do. And, and I was able to help a lot of people and that, that made me more happy than anything. So, Brilliant. yeah. And um, you... Uh, obviously you're a businessman and you love tattoos but there's a teddy bear behind sort of because you when I was speaking to a few people um, before I came to the shop someone said that you're the most sternest person in there you are the boss and you've got this sort of rock hard attitude but you absolutely love animals and that is for me I, when I was looking I was looking at one of your interviews and it, it took me a while to clock that you actually talk about animals and how you love them and how yeah. it's mink not ink it's, so it's yeah. ink not mink yeah. and you know tell me about that where did that come from and I, wow. I really want to touch on this because I also know that you turned down a Cavalli um, vodka campaign yeah. because of obviously their background with fur and animal skin yeah. let's talk about that for a little bit because I'm really intrigued you know, I, I grew up in a in a house where uh, my mom was a dog groomer and she owned a pet store. Okay. And that's what my mom did. So I didn't come from money. I came from nothing, really. And my mom struggled her whole life. But the one thing she was always happy, even though we, you know, we didn't grow up 
rich by any means. We grew up um, fairly, you know, fairly poor for for a while. And the one thing I always ask my mom is like, why didn't you try to find a job that you know would make more money? You know, now that when I got older, and she was like, because I love animals, and that's what I wanted to do. I didn't think about getting a job you know, doing something that made me money. I thought about getting a job of something that I'll be happy to do for the rest of my life. And, you know, when she opened her first, um, you know, pet shop, pet shops don't make a lot of money. And so, but one thing that it did for me is it made me love animals. Yeah. And I grew up with cats and dogs and rabbits and, Aww. I mean, every kind of animal that could be in a pet shop. So, um, you know, I, I was taught to respect animals and um, a lot more than I respect ignorance, you know, of people. So I think, it's, you know, th there's nothing more, I think, innocent than an animal to me. And yeah. I wish we could find the same thing in people. But I know. Yeah. unfortunately, it's not the case. It's going to happen. Yeah, so um, happen. it led to me, you know, when I was able to to help, you know, an organization like PETA and other ones, yeah. you know, and, and Humane Society and so many things that I've done. You know, when you got fame and, and you can you can help and push things, it's like, I think it's important to do the things that mean a lot to you and God knows there's no shortage of animal abuse and everything that we oh, do no. and in the name of vain and you know instead of wearing a, a coat that looks like fur but it's not fur we still do something exactly. terrible and so people just you know I, I just don't get it. We've talked about your um, business, we've talked about your history, what do you do in your spare time? So when you're not tattooing, when you're away from the cameras, what's Army James doing? What does he like to do? Well, um, you know, for myself and the things that I enjoy doing, like my hobbies, mm -hmm. so I like to, I always like to tinker with my motorcycles, you know, yeah, and, yeah. and I love riding, I love surfing. I'm by no means am I the best rider or the best surfer in the world, I'm far from it. But um, I enjoy those things. Love still skating once Miami's in a while. Miami's the best place. Yeah. Well, <laughs> not for surfing because it's flat. It's like a lake. But, you know, once in a while we get a good break and I go surfing with, with all my friends. And, uh, and the rest of the time I go to Costa Rica and go surf. And, you know, I still enjoy go skateboarding, you know, with all the old timers that I used to skate with when I was a kid. So, it's uh, you know, it's fun. And then... Uh, the family, you know, the family is important to me, so I spend time with my family more than anything. Brilliant. Now, any more tattoos for yourself, or do you think? I mean, these days I I collect, you know, more souvenirs more than I get huge pieces. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the last one. Oh yeah, yeah it's fresh. brand new. Yeah, it's, yeah it's it's all right. It's a couple of days old. Okay. And it's uh. Get it yourself. It's love hate. No, we all got. Oh, wow. The tattoo for Love Hate London's, you know, so Brilliant. this is the LH. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can see it now. Yeah. And then the H, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. Um, this is it. We Everybody at the shop that works at the shop got it. It was kind of like, and even our visiting artists, we all got it, and we did maybe about 12 or 13 of these. Well, if someone wanted to work hour. for you that doesn't like tattoos, but she just loves your, you know, she wants to work for Army. What is she going to do? She, I don't know. She just wants, she wants to... I'm thinking what well, I want. I'm a tattoo I just, shop. I want to. I just want to. I, I want to come work for Army James. I will keep the shop clean. I will make sure your customers are taken care. I'll bring good tea. I make good tea. Oh, nice. Um, I don't want any visible tattoos. Personally, I just don't. But I think your dad will kill you. I think my dad would kill me. Yeah, he would. Um, he doesn't even know about my other one, but never mind. Um, so what can I can I work there? Um, if you um, if we need and we have an opening, I'm sure I wouldn't discriminate. I think no, 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 I wouldn't discriminate, discriminate no, 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 on people that don't have saying, tattoos but. because. I, from my personal perspective, you need someone who understands the business. You definitely I mean, need to know the business. Through. But no, like, listen, I got a, I, I got a merch girl. She yeah. just handles the merchandise in there. Yeah. So she. But she's got tattoos. She's got tattoos, yeah. but I wouldn't, it, uh, I wouldn't have picked her because she has tattoos no. and not have tattoos because she doesn't have to answer too many questions. As soon as someone comes in and asks about a tattoo, you know, she refers them to the guy that really handles the tattoos. So, I got. Three lovely girls in there. They all, you know, two girls work on merch, They're you know, lovely. and so uh, it works. I, uh, yeah. I have, I have two girls in back in Miami that just work in the office, help me out. One of my personal assistants, and she doesn't tattoo and knows Perfect. anything about it, so it's cool.
Now I know you're pressed against time, so we'll wrap up now. So before we do go, because I know someone's waiting for the, the tattoo to finish, which looks brilliant, by the way. Thank you. Um, words of wisdom, because like you said, you, you speak very wisely about things. Number one, you weren't famous until you're 30, so fame didn't go to your head. Um, you obviously focusing on your businesses. People out there who want to make things happen for themselves, looking about, even you said you didn't grow into a rich family, you became yeah. who you are today just through life. Words of wisdom for people out there who have a dream, a wish, a goal, want to make it happen. Watch this interview right now. What's Army's words of advice? Don't take shortcuts. At the end of the day, you know, um, everybody notice, notices you when you're at the top of the hill, but you know, they hate you on the top of the hill, but they never really realize how much you had to climb up that mountain to get there. So um, to me, it's that climb, you know, and, and that constant, you know, urge to succeed. And that's the most important thing. If you believe that you're going to, you know, be successful at the end, you're going to achieve it. And um, I think I'm the true kind of like everybody always says you're like, you're the true fact that these things do happen because I really didn't come from anything and then I managed to build something good and um, you know that means anybody could do it. Perfect, thank you very much. And My quickly, pleasure. longest tattoo record for yourself, what was it? Longest tattoo that I've done on somebody? Yeah, about 12 or 13 hours. Okay. Yeah. Army, it's been a fantastic, amazing opportunity for me today. I want to say thank you so much because I know you're very busy. I know you are. And you've taken time out to talk to me exclusively. And I want to say thank you. I wish you the absolute best. My and I hope that London um, Love Hate Social Club takes off on flying colours. I hope to see you around more. Um, after today, you're flying back to? Back to Miami and then uh, go to Costa Rica, take a vacation. Of and course. then uh, sometime uh, in about five to six weeks, I think I should be back here. Brilliant. And keep on tweeting because your fans and the girls yes. love it. I keep tweeting. <laughs> it's the only way to get in touch with me and these days. You're my first follower on Twitter. It's like I opened my Twitter account because you asked me to because you wanted to awesome. follow me. How cool is that? Very cool. Let's go with that story, yeah? You All asked right. me to make a Twitter. Well, there you go. Another fantastic exclusive interview with Army James. Thank you so much for making Honey Presents go to a whole new level. Thank you for the support. And I can't wait to keep on bringing you more exclusive interviews. And I will see you in the next one very soon.